Yes, princess. I'm going to rinse you. Oh, yes, rinse me. Can you hear me, Piggy? Richard? What are you even doing in there? Business. I need 76 grand now. writing process uh with the big dog how long it kind of took what each day looked like like kind of just how you go about writing uh, a feature film so it was kind of interesting um with this one because i made it as part of my master's project um at when i was at afters and um i came into the school like pretty pretty strategically to do that um and i had scripts that i came in with that i expected to make there like i had a whole bunch of finished ones being like yeah cool i'll just go in i'll use the resources and i'll make one of these um and when i got there i realized that none of them were going to be achievable with the constrictions that i was going to have doing it that way Mm. um and just the limited resources so i had to come up with something new um in the course like right at the beginning um and it was one of those things where i just saw um, the first scene in the film, I saw that as an Instagram story one morning when I was just scrolling my feed. Mm. Um, and it was just one of those things that when I saw it, I was like, okay, I know I know how to do that story. I know where that could go and how interesting that could be. And just something just clicked with it. Um, and then it, it kind of, it was the start of 2020. So we went straight into a COVID lockdown, like pretty soon after that, um, which for me and like for writing, I mean, it seems weird to say that it was good, but it was actually like just having no distractions and being kind of like locked up was, was just really good for focus and like, you know, just going in, like I had um, a spare room in my house at the time. And so I would wake up every morning at like nine o'clock and just go in there and just sit down and just like work until I couldn't work anymore and then kind of finish and come back out. Mm. Um, and yeah, it was pretty, pretty structured like that for the the first draft at least. Um, and, and it was pretty quick. I think it was like maybe three and a half weeks. Like there'd been, um, you know, a bit of development and outlining and stuff beforehand, but actually like drafting it, I think, yeah, it was about three and a half weeks to get the first draft out. Um, and then it was, you know, a year until we shot. So that went through, I think, four drafts um, over the next year and just kind of developed that. And then, you know, it, as each new part of the production kind of came up, like, you know, casting or finding the location, then I would go back and, and redraft a little bit just to like, you know, make the pieces fit a little bit better. So did you start with um like a lot of outlining before or do you like to go straight into the script? No, I did I did outlining. Like I um I would write like a like a prose outline. I think, you know, like just kind of like a treatment, maybe like five or six pages of just what happens in the story. Um and then and then I carded it out on index cards and I had the whole thing up on my wall, just each scene, its own little card and kind of a little description of what had happened. And then I just, yeah, used that as the guide and then just jumped straight in and drafted it. When you are like kind of writing about these more delicate um, subjects, how do you kind of go about it? Is it just about like putting in the research and hours into knowing about what you're talking about? Or is it like coming from somewhere honest? How do you kind of go about it? With all the kind of stuff like uh, around like um, kind of male entitlement and the kind of toxic masculinity side of it, that was just, you know, I'd written about that in shorts before and I'd kind of had dealt with similar themes. And that kind of more came from me and my feelings about just like, life and men and stuff in general um but when it came to something specific like like findom that's where i had to really research um you know and especially because the whole thing you know it's a dark comedy but i wanted to make sure that it wasn't making fun of that fetish or anyone that engaged in it really it was like Mm. more specifically making fun of the guy for other reasons and he just happened to be you know involved in findom um and so yeah that side of it took took more research i reached out to like a whole bunch of people just over twitter that were like involved in that like um you know women dominatrixes and just kind of like yeah just asked if they'd be open to talking with me and like you know they were really interested in it and like making sure that yeah it was like portrayed in a way that felt like 
there was some you know sensitivity and understanding of it rather than just making fun of it yeah because that that brings me on to my next question perfectly which is like i've seen you in your shorts and you talk about it a lot it's like this focus on like kind of dysfunctional men and like the impact on their relationships and people around them is that something like you want to continue to explore or are you kind of done now doing the short film like is it a theme you'll keep in your work i think in in some iteration will always be in there because it's just such it's such a prevalent issue you know um and in such a far-reaching one like it just it impacts so much stuff in life and it's still well well it's still a problem <laughs> and it will be a for a little while longer mm. then i think yeah we're going to be dealing with it and i'll probably still be writing about it in some way going back a little bit to talking about like the pre-production when you did have the limited crew and uh, so you say the active schedules were changing and then covid what do you like kind of rely on to keep you going like where does like the motivation kind of draw from um i think like it, once once the kind of production train was running like I think it was just, you know, understanding that everyone's got a lot invested in this and it just had to keep going. And, you know, you have to kind of do it for everyone that's that's invested in like, you know, put faith in you and, and wanted to help you tell whatever the story is. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think outside of that, maybe when I was just writing, like keeping motivated, then I think is more about um, discipline and just developing a routine. And sometimes, you know, like it's hard um you know, if, if there's days where it doesn't, you don't feel inspired or whatever, just making sure that you're still working and you've still got, you know, things going on. Um, yeah. yeah. And just, I think just discipline and routine is like the, the main thing there. Yeah, definitely. Cause I, I feel like I kind of struggle with that as well, especially with writing. It's that whole, like, it's a lot easier to write when you're motivated, but writing is all about just doing it every day and repetition. So yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. Um, I've also seen you say that you like bringing like improv onto set for your short films. Is that something you did for this film as well? And like, kind of, what do you offer the actors to help with the improv? Yeah, like, it, it. I don't necessarily like use a lot of improv in like scenes. Say that you know, like, there, there's the written scenes, and usually what I'll do is improv like around it. Like either you know, improving like you know. Uh, like a backstory to the scene or, you know, developing character through improv and then putting that into the written work. Mm. Um, and I did, did a little bit of that with this one. I remember um, the page and Shanti scenes. Um, I can't remember which one in particular, but I remember there was a day that we spent. And so we would, you know, we set up to cover the scene and then, you know, I would say like, cause it starts, you know, while they're already kind of mid argument or mid conversation, we would just improv what the start of that looked like. And then at some point, whenever they felt like the words were right, they would just go into the actual scripted part of it. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think using improv that way was, it was more of the yeah, tool to get the, um, you know, just the tone of performance, right. And the kind of rhythms, right. Going into something like that. Is that, um, something you kind of discovered with your short films or have you just always done it? I think it was on, um, on angel fish, a short I made a couple of years ago. Um, and it was more cause, cause it, that short was all shot in six hours. It was just one day. Um, and I didn't have a lot of time with the actors. Um, and so when we got to rehearsing it, it was more about like, what was the most efficient way to get them to kind of bond um quickly and like we did a bit of like deep background improv there and i think seeing how successfully it worked then i kind of just like brought it into my process a bit more just like a very basic simple question but i love always asking is like kind of your just biggest inspirations like directors and then also a lot of films you watched for the big dog and you were telling other people to watch um i mean just like like broad inspiration like uh like Kubrick has always been someone that's like been a big figure um I just yeah like anyone that kind of delves into like you know the ironies of life I think I really like connect with that a lot mm. um and but specifically for this one we watched um I'm trying to think now it was a while ago um 
I remember we looked at some like uh, like '90s American indie stuff. Like Todd Solons was one that I mean, I think that was actually more for me when I was writing it. But um, um, Ruben Oslin was one that we kind of looked at a bit. Like um, Force Majeure was a movie, mm -hmm. like just about um, you know making dysfunction kind of funny and doing it in a way that didn't feel like super cheap. I think he did that really well in that movie, and it was yeah something that I think we watched with the crew. Um, trying to remember what else we we did it was good um one of the good things about doing it afters is they had a you know a theater there so i could screen stuff to the crew which was really like a good experience like yeah um you know just taking a day out and being like cool we're going to watch this movie and then we're going to like yeah talk about how and why it's going to influence what we're doing and like really break it down like on set <laughs> is that something you do a lot where you're like oh it's kind of like this film like with the actors or with the dop or do you kind of... no i think i think in pre-production is is mostly where like kind of influences and resonances kind of come into it but once once we get to set it's more about like how we've interpreted that and like are using it to kind of out like you know our own style in a way the biggest jumps you found from going from making shorts to a feature just some things that like people kind of don't tell you that you weren't aware of yeah it's it's a good question because in the actual practicalities of it, I, you know, there isn't that much difference. Like it is just the same thing, but kind of longer. I mean, keeping all the, the entire narrative in your head is a, a bit trickier because there's so much story and just like thinking about, you know, this scene and where it sits in relation to other scenes and like, you know, that that stuff is a little bit harder, just keeping it all, you know, in 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 mind, like and kind of still trying to be present, but thinking about the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Um that's that's probably the one of the biggest jumps but outside of that i think realistically it's more like the the biggest thing i've noticed is when you like a feature compared to a short like this there's like commercial applications for it you know whereas a short you're just making it like it's you, no one is going to like it's not going to go like to the cinemas right but mm -hmm. like you know so once once you start making a feature and it's like this could actually like you know do something um yeah you kind of start thinking about that a little bit differently as well yeah right just like kind of how it's going to appeal to a broader audience is that what you mean well yeah i mean just just i think well for me personally when i was making shorts it was like okay this is like me figuring out how to do the things i want to do inside this medium and kind of testing things mm. but like yeah once it got to a feature it's like okay how is this really going to play for an audience i think that yeah. was like just more in my mind and not necessarily in a, in a commercial sense but just like an experiential sense like how how is that you know like 90 minutes going to feel and what what ride is that going to be like for an audience and then uh just kind of your like advice to younger filmmakers who are stuck in that period that you're kind of talking about where you are just making shorts and like no one's really paying attention to your stuff but you know, you have that dream of making a feature film, what would you kind of tell them? Just keep going and being resourceful and finding opportunities. Like, cause there's, there's heaps of different pathways to do it. Um, you know, it's difficult in Australia cause there's not a lot of really, really grassroots independent support for that kind of production. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but I think there are, there are opportunities. You just have to really be on the lookout for them all the time. Um, and yeah, and just try and be as strategic as possible to like get the most out of very little, like just practice, like, you know, working with not a lot, but getting the results that you want to get on that kind of budget range. Um, yeah. And just, just hustling. Yeah. This is another question I always ask, but like the Australian film industry, and I've seen you talk about it in another interview, it does feel like it's kind of moving where like smaller indie films do seem like they're kind of being made now with like the big dog bird eater as well um where do you want the film industry to kind of keep moving or where do you see it in like five years yeah i mean i think there's a lot of reasons why that's kind of happening now because it does seem like there's more um you know kind of grassroots independent stuff being made than than i've ever seen in my lifetime um and i think COVID actually accounts for that a lot. I think a lot of people, once lockdown hit, they were like, you know, this is the kind of now or never situation. I'm going to make my first feature. Um, and I think that kind of motivated a lot of people um, to kind of, yeah, write that script and then come out of lockdown ready to kind of make it. And, and, and I think, yeah, that spurred a lot of that production. And then 
I think the actors strike actually kind of helped get it further, like into cinemas and stuff. Mm. Um, so I think it was just like a kind of whirlwind of, of circumstances that kind of helped that happen. Um, but I hope that, yeah, it continues to happen. And I hope that there is a lot more of that kind of level of production um, because yeah, it's really hard uh, in this country. It's like such a small market for films. So it's not a lot of like, there's not a lot of investment into it. Like, um, you know, private investment on the scale that, you know, a micro budget film is made. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully this kind of wave of new films will, will, you know, show people that it can happen and that there is an audience for it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I completely agree. And I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's just cause I've been paying more attention this year, but just the like seeing like the big dog in a cinema and then seeing bird eater in a film festival, like these two films made with like no budget, you know, it's just very inspiring. I'm, I'm hoping I keep seeing more, especially get cinema releases. I think it's so sick. Yeah. 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 Me too. Mm. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot this year, like um, sunflower was another one that did really well. Yeah. Like there's a lot of like independent stuff. That's really, yeah. Kind of hitting it out of the park. Like what is next for you? What are you working on? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, one of the producers and I have a production company together called 2C Pictures, and we've got um, two other kind of feature projects in development at the moment. Um, they're kind of early stage development, and we're still, you know, getting the release of The Big Dog wrapped up. But that's kind of, yeah, what we're, we're going to do next. We kind of just want to keep making features. Yeah, cool. Perfect.